Okay, welcome everyone. I am Molly Levine Hunt, and we're gonna be talking about um, my favorite day of the week, which is Tuesdays. I get to uh, hang out with my artists at the tower. So I'm Molly Magnolia. Molly Magnolia is my Eden name. And this is my crew. When I'm not um, hanging with my elders, I hang with this crew. Um, and so um, it's my husband, Jim, and my daughter, Rory, and my son, Joseph. Um, who's four and a half months, and so I'm just back to work from an awesome maternity leave. Luckily, I love my job, and so it wasn't hard coming back. I brought my own cheering squad right here, my colleagues Debbie and Georgia. Um, and so I am a social worker, I'm an Eden educator, um, I'm an advocate, a listener, and then when I'm not doing those things, um, I like to craft and create art and run the trails and explore nature with my crew and uh, listen to music. So we just had a pretty delicious lunch. Maybe some people got to go out and experience a little bit of sunshine. Um, and so I thought we could just start with kind of getting centered and um, sharing just right whatever, when you hear the word gratitude, what you're grateful for, the first thing that comes to mind. So. Right now, I'm grateful for this experience to be presenting at the Eden Alternative Conference, because this is huge for me. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, Grand Ballroom A, that's like such a big room. But I am grateful for each of you that came, <laughs> because you know what, this is gonna be awesome. So if everyone wants to share something they're grateful for, no pressure, you can totally pass. We can either do a popcorn or we could go around. And who wants to start? I started with my, Go, go ahead, say again. Life. Light, grateful for life, great. Second chances. Second chances, yes. Love it. Living her purpose. Jackie, living her purpose, awesome. Um, I'm grateful for being here also. Grateful to be here. That's beautiful. All right, administrator, given chances. Cool. Finding yourself. Beautiful. Grateful for these sessions? Sure. This is up for stealing because I Googled this and got this image, so I stole it from somebody else. I did not create this. Yes. And I'm sorry, did you say you were grateful for coffee? Absolutely not, for sure. Grateful for coffee, yeah. I'm grateful that I made it here today down 400 because it was wild. So I'm, I'm a native Atlantan, so welcome to Atlanta, everybody. And hopefully most of you will be staying in the hotel. You will not have to brave the roads because in Atlanta, our roads are you know a little wild sometimes. So every time we get somewhere um, you know, in less than two hours, we're grateful. Go ahead. Awesome. For sure. Beautiful things to be grateful for. Does anybody else want to shout something out? So Debbie, I heard you say grateful first for family and then to, for your work and to be working with people who have the same appreciation and love for elders and the work that you do. Awesome. Thank you. Lower pain days. Lower pain days. Okay. Maybe something our elders that we work with also feel. Right, but you and then, yeah. Okay, so how's your pain level today? Sure. So what's today feeling like for you? It's um, kind of coming and going. Coming and going? Anytime I have to ride a long time to get somewhere, it's cold. Okay. You know, it's, it's still a lot. Sure. Okay. Well, um, something that Debbie Dooley right here tells me, sitting is a new smoking. So anytime anybody needs to get up and move a little bit, we can move a little bit. Especially, you know, get up and move. 
and we're going to be creating a little bit of art. So does anybody have anything else that they want to share that they're grateful for? It can be like really big, really small. Yeah. Sure. That's awesome. I. What was that? You have a grandchild on the way? Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. OK, anybody else? Any more gratuity to share? Feelings of gratitude? Oops. Oh, this is a, that's right. OK, so creative art therapy, expressive art, art therapy. Does anybody, do we have any art therapists in the house? Anybody, has anybody experienced art therapy? Does anybody know an art therapist? Yes, you know some art therapists? Okay, great, okay. So let me tell you a little bit about what creative art therapy is. Just from the name, you might be able to be like, oh, it's maybe like you're with a therapist and you get to like draw. Yeah, some of that. But it's a, a form of psychotherapy that's used um, with free expression. So sometimes we think of therapy and it's just talk therapy. Well, talk therapy isn't easy for a lot of people, you know? Um, to be able to pinpoint their feelings and to talk about them and come up with goals. Um, that can be really challenging for a lot of people. So that's where different kinds of expressive arts can be really helpful. So um, people util utilizing creative art therapy and expressive art therapy are encouraged to explore their responses, reactions, and insights through pictures, sounds, explorations, and encounters with art. So it's not always creating art yourself, like being in the moment, drawing out your feelings. Sometimes that can be your reaction from seeing different images or different textures or learning about somebody else's experience with art. So one thing that I always hear, especially with group that we're gonna talk about in a little bit, is you don't have to have any training, you don't have to have any artistic ability to benefit from creative art and creative expression art. Um, that's just a myth that oftentimes scares people away from, you know, kind of getting creative in art. So, you know, it's like art therapy works when, you know, words aren't enough or you don't know the words that you need to express yourself. So goals of art therapy really are the goals of any kind of therapeutic intervention or process. It's trying to meet those goals of better, like overall well-being, or if there is some trauma, some childhood trauma, some adult trauma, or some trauma that happened at any time during, you know, someone's life. It's to manage those, manage those feelings. We can't cure feelings. We can't, unfortunately, we can't cure someone of the trauma, but we can help them with those experiences and with those triggers. So if we know that something triggers if a certain kind of music reminds them of something that happened to them, you know, some of the techniques that you can learn in talk therapy and in expressive therapy is to, when those feelings come up, is to how to process them, how to realize it's happening, and then protect yourself. So this, thing, this is really magical with elders who, you know, have experienced trauma or, or who have experienced loss. So almost all of our elders have experienced some kind of loss even if they weren't close with their families or their parents or they had, or if those people were the uh, reason and the perpetrators of that trauma, they lost those people, you know, they've you know, lost them somewhere along the way. Um, and so really helping them, you know, cope with that and accepting that and, and working through that. So that's where um, it can be really beneficial uh, with, with elders working through it. Okay, so this is my Tuesday group. This picture was taken at our last art show. Um, so these are, this is me. This is the art therapist that I work with, Ling. And these, this, we had a really heavy intern group this year, which was awesome. So these are our interns, social work interns. And uh, Nathaniel was a gerontology intern. And then these are our artists that I'm gonna tell you a little bit about. So I'm hoping that from learning about my group, you might be encouraged to start your own group at your community or talk to somebody about um, starting a group at their community. So every Tuesday, we meet in the rec room at the Jewish Tower, which is an independent living 
community like two miles down the road from here. It's HUD subsidized, so people um, from all walks of life live there, and that's what makes it so unique. Um, so everybody, you know, kind of comes in around 10, 10, 15. You know, we have one woman that comes at 9.30 and she just kind of has a space to herself and she helps lay out all of the uh, paper and that's kind of her like zen moment in the morning. She comes and you better not lay it out before she gets there because that's her thing. Um, we warm up before we start our open studio time. When I'm allowed to do a warm up, usually, you know, they'll, they'll do what I want to, but sometimes they're like, we just want to get started. And like, I'm like, okay, this is your time, so we'll do what you want to do. Um, I really like warm ups, kind of bringing everybody together, maybe with just like a moment of mindfulness, a quick meditation. But usually they're like, we don't want all that, we just want to create art. And I'm like, let's just do art then. And so open studio, is that language that's familiar or, or not really? So open studio just means, so we have all the supplies, like these are some of the supplies we used, we use in group, and then it's just kind of an open forum. Ling and I and our interns are there to help um, support, maybe get supplies if they need it, um, and, and encourage and help in some ways. Um, we try not to actually do anything on, you know, with their project, although they really want us to. Um, it's so empowering when you, you know, like, no, you can do it. Here's and all, and all. This is what I'm thinking about. And then they do it, and they're like, I did it. Yes, you did. So it takes a lot of encouragement. Um, and so the open studio is just, we really have, you know, an hour and a half of just creating. And so we have a lot of people that work with. Uh, acrylic paint, watercolors, pastels. Um, for a while, watercolor pencils were all the rage when, um, you know, the, um, the coloring books, you know, those became like really popular, every, you know, the coloring books. Um, a few people were into that, but mostly my elders really just like to do their own thing. Um, and markers, crayons, um, all different kinds of supplies, um, chalk pastels. Um, and then at, after, um, you know, some good art making and socializing, sometimes people do no work and they just socialize. And that's magical. Some people in the group complain about it, like she talks too much, she's too loud, the music's too loud. But they're out of their apartments and they're in a creative, safe, safe space and that's usually where the magic happens. Um, you know, sometimes I'll show you a picture of um, a couple people here in a minute. Uh, actually, Rudy, right here, this is Rudy. Um, he, everybody in the group calls him the Italian Stallion. Rudy is a professional artist and he is, um, he still sells his pieces. He's still in galleries all around Atlanta. Um, and he, we actually had a fight break out in group last week uh, with Rudy and another member. And luckily they were able to, I'm not there to, to solve anything. These are adults and they can, but it was very interesting. It was about the art supplies, um, but it was, um, I was scared. Not that I thought they were actually going to hurt each other, but it was really intense in our little safe space. Um, so, you know, you never know what to expect on Tuesdays when we come. Um, so that's Rudy, and this is Betty, and she um, just moved down to Atlanta from New York to be close to her family down here, and she is really enjoying the space. And on her phone right here is a picture of her grandson, whose birthday was last week, so she is creating, um, she's like painting him, and then she's going to send it to him. So that was really cool and she was really excited about it and so everybody in the group you know listened um, about her grandson she's a very proud grandmother she doesn't get to see him a lot um, but she is very proud and so that was really cool yeah when you so when you start these classes do you give them like a, an idea or something like you know we're going to be doing this today or is it more what they feel like right it's totally up to them it's person-centered in whatever they want to do um, so it's not a class, 
And so that's what, I'm sorry, I might not have explained Open Studio. It's totally up to them. We have all the supplies. We also have some Muse boxes, we call them. So they're calendars, magazines, old art books where they look through and get ideas um, to paint from. A lot of our artists need something to copy and to kind of create, and that's okay. Um, and once they've done that a few times, sometimes they'll go out on their own and kind of do their own thing. But the Muse box is huge. Um, and it's like anywhere from, you know, the free calendars you get of like the flowers, pictures of flowers, or from, um, you know, animals. Birds are very popular right now. Uh, florals and birds are very popular. That's almost what our whole show was last time. Um, and so let me just go back. Okay, and so after all the open studio time, everybody kind of doing their own thing, um, we clean up. It's a group effort to clean up. And we, Ling and I and our interns, we, we help, but we really kind of give the elders some ownership. This is, this is your space, everybody has to help clean up. So we have some that really help so much and then some that just like hang out and let everybody, clean up. well, with all things, you know. And then um, at noon, we do about 10, 15 minutes of chair yoga. Um, Ling is a yoga therapist as well, so she leads us. And um, it's really awesome. It's some of the only exercise our elders get. And it's things that they can take home with them. Just the simple, well, we can do a few right now. Like sitting in your chair with both feet on the ground. And your back as straight as you can get it, as long as you're comfortable. And the thing with yoga is if it hurts, then stop. Okay? So just sitting here and just kind of look over your right shoulder. And if you need a little more of a stretch, grab your left hand and put it on that right knee. And just, you know, push a little bit. Keep that gaze over the right shoulder. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And one more deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And then meet me back at center. And let's do the same thing on the other side. Over your left shoulder, right hand on your left knee. Deep breath in through your nose and release through your mouth. And one more breath. And release. And then come back to center. And then with that right leg, just kind of kick that right leg out. And wave your toes front and back. And then with your left, just kind of shake that around front and back, front and back, and then come, and then meet in the middle, and then bring those hands out, and bring them up, pat your neighbor on the shoulder, wave a little bit, and then bring it on in, prayer. <sighs> okay, great, now we're a little centered. So that's usually what we do for about 10 to 15 minutes. And Ling will ask everybody, is anybody feeling like, is there anywhere that you feel, and everyone's like, oh, my back, you know, my legs, my shoulders, my neck. And so Ling will then focus on a few of those spots. And then we go into, you know, our art critique, which is really, we talk about the art. Some people say, I'm stuck on this, help me. And um, it's really active and involved. And sometimes we'll stay on one piece for a really, you know, extended period of time where, you know, there's, we have a couple others like, it's lunchtime, we need to leave. So I say, okay, if you need to go. But you know, sometimes we get really into the art and the elder whose art we're talking about feels so seen and special. That's, that's like some of the magic that we see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. We always try to reframe in a positive. Okay, so you're saying that you think she ruined her piece by using all this black paint. How can she, what do you think, where should she go from here? So we, usually, like, we hear what you're saying and, and we see that. So what are your, what's your advice? Or sometimes we move right along, like that was really nasty and so we're gonna move along. Um, but yeah, I mean, some people are super honest and sometimes the honesty is not easy to hear. Um, but we always try to, see the art as a work in progress and move right along. But no, that happens. I mean, you know, uh, we have one woman, um, Phyllis, 
who I'll show you in a minute, um, she'll tell you how it is regardless. And she's been in the group for since it started 22 years ago. Um, so this is Anne. Anne is 99 years old, and she has been in the group for about three years um, since she moved to uh, since she moved to the tower. Um, Anne has always created art with her husband. They created jewelry um, and sculptures and painting. Now Anne primarily uses watered down acrylic paint on canvas board. Um, Anne has macular degeneration. Um, and so her famous line is, you know, when people are like, oh my gosh, Anne, this is beautiful. It's not bad for someone who can't see, right? Um, and so Anne is, um, Anne is going to be here on Saturday morning at 8.30. I'm bringing her and she's gonna talk about her experience um, of creating art through um, losing her vision. And so she's gonna have some of the work that she um, did when she was younger, when she had her full uh, healthy eyesight, and to now as she's, you know, her eyesight is very limited. Um, but Anne busts out work. She finishes about two paintings a week. And um, last month we had an art show and her family, her daughter came and her two granddaughters came and I got a big scrapbook for her and put all of her art in there because we have no room for it anymore because she is just prolific with producing it. And I gave the book to her granddaughter thinking Anne would want her to have it. And I feel like Anne might have wanted her granddaughters to pay for some of her art. <laughs> I was like, Oh, I didn't realize, because Anne doesn't want to take home any of her art, so of course her granddaughters would want it. Anne would want her granddaughters to have it. My first, my first mistake there was not double checking with Anne that she was okay with me gifting her art. Anne didn't want it, but she didn't want me to give it away, and I couldn't hold it. But Anne is amazing, and so please come on Saturday morning at like 8.30 in the morning, which Anne was not happy about. but. That's what the schedule had. So Anne will be here, and it should be really fun because she is so funny and awesome and has really beautiful experience and loves art. Uh, this is Phyllis, who I said before. She and her husband, who we lost about six years ago, um, joined the group when it first started 22 years ago with art therapist Kate Federoff, and that's who I studied under in my graduate program. And I was an intern in the group in 2007. Um, took a little time off and then now I've been with the group ever since. And this is Ling, uh, my, uh, the art therapist, yoga therapist, and overall just amazing human being who I'm so lucky to, the, to do the group with. Okay, so did anybody, I know at least one person had like a lot of anxiety thinking about that they would have to create something. Is anybody else like worried about that? No? A little bit? No? Yeah? Okay. Um, well, this is going to be a safe space, but we are going to do a project. And so I have all the supplies here. And so I printed out a few different masks in different colors. So this is the kind of gender neutral one. And then we have one with a few kind of more masculine and then one a little more feminine. You can use any one you'd like. And then the front of the mask will depict how others see you. This is what you wear out into the world. This is what others see you. This is what you put out there. This is how you think other people see you. Maybe this is what you want them to think of you. And then on the back is how you see yourself, especially in ways that you feel different. We did this in my art group about a year ago, and it was really cool. Um, it was really sad what everybody, fe what the elders felt like the world, how they saw them. You know, it was like really hurtful language, like um, useless, helpless, sick, old, stupid, language like that. Um, and on the back, it was how they wanted people to see them. Like I was a teacher, I was, you know, I was, you know, really, sp I was a mom, I was a partner, I was, you know, a board member on things in the community. Um, and so those are almost like the hidden things. So I'm not going to talk any more about this. I want you to kind of have your own kind of creative expression. If you get stuck or if you're like, or if any emotions come up that don't feel good, um, 
you know, put it down and you can, you know, make eyes with me and we can talk about something else. So the front is how, is what you show the world. And then the back is what's inside that maybe people don't, don't know about you. Any questions? No, so whatever you feel comfortable with, words, shapes, colors, drawings, whatever, whatever serves you on both sides. So anything you want, it can be words, it can be shapes, it can be symbols. And then I have the, okay, so here's this. Okay, so everybody can, yeah, Georgia. No, how you already think they see you. Mm -hmm. And then the back, how you see yourself, especially in ways. Yeah, so I'm going to leave this up here. So let's just like let loose, relax, no judgment. You're not going to have to share. So this can be totally private. Unless you're like, I really want to share, then we can share. Um, so come on up. Let's get up, shake it out a little bit. Come get a mask. And then there's all different kinds of supplies up here. Um, these are some of the supplies that we use in group. Oh, sorry, let me move all these papers. Okay, so Annie wants to share hers. So, oh, thank you guys for bringing all the supplies back. So Annie, tell, tell, us, tell us about your front. Well, Annie, he's going to get a microphone because I know everyone wants to hear it and they're videoing it, so I think they want to hear it too. <coughs> okay. Soliciting some emotion for you? Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Annie, take your time. Okay? Well, art is emotional. I think that the world sees me as being happy, bossy, mm -hmm. in control, controlling. How I see the world right now is because I'm sad. My sister just died. And, uh, Art brings about emotion. Sure. I don't think I ever thought about that. Okay. Yeah. So, did you want to go? Yeah. Oh, okay. You want to elaborate on her? Well, Annie, I think that's a beautiful way, and some people want to see her. Do you mind if I hold yours up? Okay. So this is this is Annie. How the world sees her as happy, bossy. Mm -hmm. What was the other word you used? Control. And controlling. Okay and in control. So, you know, happy and in control. That's how the world sees Annie. But right now, what's on the inside is Annie is grieving. She's sad. And this project brought about a bunch of emotion for you. Okay. Well, I hope you, you know, take care of yourself. This is a, this is a space um, filled with love and support. I'm just looking around at everybody's eyes and everybody is you know, holding that space for you. So I'm so sorry for your loss. So did you want to go? Yeah. All right. Okay, this is the way I feel that people see me. I, I think that they see me as being happy, creative, outgoing, fun, exciting, forward, and real. But in reality, I am afraid I'm lonely at time. I'm misunderstood. I'm lost. I'm, I'm unsure of who I really am. And I'm happy if I make you happy. So that was beautiful and honest and raw. And thank you so much for sharing. That was really cool. Does anybody else want to share theirs? Yeah. So, I'm going to lie. So, this is how You do not have to stand up. Okay. I'll stand up. Okay. So this is probably how everyone sees me because I'm an activity director. So that's part of the job. And it really is, oh, well, so she knows me. She knows me. How does everybody me. see you? Oh, as happy and, you know, 
sparkly and stuff and not my words people just tell me that but really uh, I mean I do feel that way but when I get home at the end of the day I'm always really tired and the one thing that I would want to do is to like close my door and get the bed and it's not because I'm depressed it's just because I guess it like you were saying it makes me happy to make other people happy and I do that all day so in my social and my personal life I'm actually more of an introvert because I don't know I just love giving it to other people but me personally I would rather just be quiet I don't know it's a strong contrast it's just how I feel thanks I almost started crying. so I am going to try to um, not go into all of that because I think we could talk a lot about that and it seems like that's coming up a lot that you know at work you know I'm happy if I make you happy but we have to find some happiness other than that. We can't just work off of those emotions, seeing an elder happy and that makes us happy, right? But that's beautiful and I can tell that you guys love your work and you love your elders. But you've got that self-care aspect of finding happiness, you know, outside of that is something I think we can all work on. You know, does anybody else wanna share? Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I think that the world sees me as um, fun and kind and happy and caring and loving and that I would do anything for anybody. And I also feel that um, I don't think that um, too many people find me um, pretty or um, uh, I would say in a sense um, girlfriend material. Um, or attractive enough to be um, of um, somebody's mate. Um, but yet on the other side, this is how I see myself, um, that I do find myself pretty enough to be somebody's mate um, and that one day I will be somebody's mate um, and that if I'm single, that there is somebody out there that is waiting to um, be my mate and that I do find myself amazing and happy and pretty enough to be that person's um, mate. So um, that's kind of how I see myself, so. Beautiful, thank you. For being such a big space, I feel like it's a really small vulnerable space right now. I kind of want everybody just to get like really together, but we don't have to. Um, does, anybody else, does anybody else want to share theirs? Thank you. Okay. Does anybody want to comment on what this experience was like or what the experience was like for you hearing our classmates be vulnerable and honest and anybody? Yeah. Yes, I want to elaborate because um, Mrs. Devro is our administrator at our facility and it's amazing to me. This is a very good opportunity for me because I get to see this side, it's a blessing. Because we do see her that way. Um, I've worked in a lot of facilities and she's one of the first administrators that I have seen get out on the floor and work as hard as we do. And that's from working in the kitchen, cleaning bathrooms, wiping walls and doing our paperwork, assisting us with our paperwork if we need help. Yes, she has been through a traumatic experience. She did lose her sister. She didn't mention at the same time she came down with pneumonia and flu, the flu, and she couldn't walk. She could barely catch her breath. But yet and still she would, park in, she would park in front of the facility and come in to check on us and make sure that everything was okay until her husband started getting a little harder on her and the doctor also and told her to rest. So we do see her as being this strong individual. We see her as not, not the kind of person that can be broken. And I am so sorry because I did not know how you were grieving because you never let us know, not even in the stand-up meeting. You always sat there and you was very strong and trying to keep us strong through all the things we were going through. And I'm glad that we know this and I'm sorry. And I do love you and appreciate you and all that you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, this is absolutely beautiful and this spontaneous emotion can come up mm -hmm. if you bring this to your community or any other kind of expressive art you know modality you know 
things come up like this. And Annie, it seems like you needed this space. And I'm so glad that we could use this space for your coworker and friend to honor you in that way. So thank you, and thank you. Debbie? That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> I'm, I'm really impressed that we all, well, not all of us, but a lot of us have um, just, you know, unveiled our, our private persona. We have a public persona that we share with people, and it doesn't always match what we, um, what we experience inside. We can present as capable and competent and happy and smart, and really we're thinking, ooh, did I do the right thing? Uh, did I harm someone? Did I make the right decision with that family? And so it just seems that there's a very common thread that we, um, mm -hmm. the two personas don't naturally match. Um, right. It's pretty cool. Right. So in, you know, in this, I feel like we had a lot of, you know, a lot of the stuff that was on the front of our mask where we think, again, let me just show you, the front of our mask is how other people say it. Some of them are positive. But then we had some that were negative and the negative feelings that we have, that we feel from the outside world. And I think that's something that our elders often feel. You know, they're not good enough. Maybe they're being judged. And so I think this is a beautiful activity to do. I had some people that just wouldn't do it. Maybe it was a little, it didn't feel safe for them. They were afraid of those emotions that might come up. Um, which I feel like it takes, again, like a lot of vulnerability and being, you know, feeling safe. So if you create that safety, if you create that small space, like this is a pretty big group of mostly people who are strangers coming together and sharing. In your community, it might be a small group of maybe people that are friendly. That can almost make it more challenging because then they have to see them at dinner. Then they have to see them in the hall, you know? So I would encourage you, before you open up with an expressive art activity like this, making sure that it is a safe space for people to bring up stuff, um, you know, that can be really challenging and can be, you know, leave people vulnerable. You just gotta make sure your aftercare is really important too, which I know I only have a few minutes left, but go ahead, Jackie. I was just curious in terms of uh, this type of expressive art medium for care partners um, because we hear or I've heard today and earlier this week that typically a person living with dementia, their biggest trigger are their care partners. Yeah. So could this be a way to bridge and broach what each other are feeling in a safe place? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is an activity that can really bring a lot of people together. Even over here, I saw you get out of your seat to make sure she didn't feel alone. No, I didn't. That's yeah. what I to say. My condolences to her and to all of you. I feel a connection with you. I've never met any of you. And I've never met Emily, but she, you're beautiful. And a higher mm -hmm. power has something coming for you, the right person for you. Absolutely. So I just want, I didn't want her to be by herself. That's so really I beautiful. Thank you for and giving you. her that companionship. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, this is a great activity. I've done an activity similar to this with care partners um, in a spousal group that um, I was just a guest in. And it was really, it wasn't masks. It was almost like what your perfect day looked like 10 years ago and what your perfect day is now. And that was really powerful because their perfect day 10 years ago when their partner was healthy and they could do the activities they loved looked a lot different than what their present day would be like. Like some of them, their, their perfect day now was to, you know, go a couple hours at night without getting up, you know, without having to, to change the sheets on the bed, without having to, you know, do some other really intimate, you know, care partner task with their loved one. Um, so again, when you dive deep into this stuff, just make sure you have, you know, a healthy way to kind of get, get back out of it. Um, so, you know, having pictures of, you know, people that make you smile is, that was just, I put that on there as an encouragement, like, <laughs> like you can do it. Don't be afraid to make your mask. You know, like this cute guy is, he's like telling you, you've got this girl. Um, that's just an example of mask that, um, 
someone created. And then these are, and if you'd like some more of this information, I've got my cards and stuff up here and I can send you this PowerPoint and some of this stuff. I've got a bunch of extras. You're welcome to take them and make copies of them. But here's some, you guys didn't need any of this to get the conversation going. But, um, you know, talking about like, how are these the same? What are some similarities from the front and the back of your mask? Um, and I'm interested to know, what's your plan with your mask? Are some people just ready to throw this mask in the trash? Like, this is a little heavy. You ready to throw yours away? No. Oh. Cool. Of course, I've already planned my week, but all of this is just feeding in different ideas of things. Sure. Like that. We're going to do a mural, so I think. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Oh, no, that's very cool. Um, so, these are just some of the questions. Um, and so, going back to group as a whole, you can do it. If you are part of um, a community, you can bring an open studio group. Um, all you need is people that are willing to come down and hang out and create some art together. Um, any kind of art. You can have all different kinds of mediums and supplies. You know, as I talked about before, those coloring books um, can be really good for people with anxiety or really bad for people with anxiety. It just depends on that person. I've seen both. Um, and I would also, you know, when you're talking about the group, when you're making up a flyer to put in the elevator, you know, lead with, you know, language that is inviting. Like, art group will get you no people other than actual artists. But, you know, I always love when people come down and I ask them, oh, would you like to join group? They're like, I can't draw a straight line. Good. Straight lines are boring. We want really different, awesome lines. Um, and then just telling them we're going to have fun, we're going to laugh, we're going to connect, we're going to talk about, you know, well, politics usually isn't like the healthiest thing to talk about. But like what happened on Dancing with the Stars? It's really big. Like the day. I think Dancing with the Stars must be on Monday, because on Tuesday, that's what all my elders are talking about. Um, and just tell them you're going to make a connection. You're, we're going to have fun. It's you know, a space to just get out of your apartment. So many people at the Jewish Tower where I do this, the group is the only time they come out of their apartment, unless it's to do laundry or go shopping. So that speaks volumes to how our elders are so isolated and lonely and have a feeling of helplessness. So I think that's it. And I just wanted to leave you um, with a, can I put this on the table? Okay. Um, with, um, with just some language of namaste. Um, so, my soul honors your soul. I honor the place in where you are in the world and the universe you reside. I honor the light, love, truth, beauty, and peace within you, because it is also within me. In sharing these things and this time together, we are united, we are the same, and we are one. And I really feel that because we're all here for similar reasons. We all, you know, are on our path to create um, better space, safer space, a, a warmer space for our elders. So with that, thank you so much for coming to this session um, and for your time and for sharing. So thanks.